Hope you all enjoyed the quiet meditation time. Now we'll have a, very happy to have Professor Costello from the Perimeter Institute here. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Simon. Um, sorry, it was a too lazy for a slide talk. Busy time of year, so. Uh, so what I want to talk about is. Um, a topic I'm assuming many people are familiar with various aspects of it. So I'm going to start by discussing something very basic, which is the harmonic map equation. Suppose we have a Riemannian manifold. <coughs> and a human surface. Consider the following familiar Lagrangian. Where if I have a mapping from sigma to m, I can average over the surface the norm squared of its derivative. And the corresponding other Lagrange equation. is the harmonic map equation. Of course, this can be varied. If I have a two form on M, we can also add on the pullback of the two form to vary this Lagrangian and to vary that harmonic map equation. And for future reference, we note that this only depends, at least up to some topological terms, which don't affect the equations, on D O. So, Many years ago, I don't know who the first person was to notice this, and um, it was found that there's a kind of miracle. So sometimes this PD is integral. This PD is one of the, the basic PDs of mathematical physics. Um, so we study of minimal surfaces and kind of variable problems in geometry. And so it's kind of remarkable that there are cases, there are particular manifolds M, for which you can really get solve exactly the solutions of this equation. So what does that mean? Expressed in terms of the flatness of an auxiliary connection called a lax connection. So let me remind you of the lax <coughs> connection. I'm sure some people are familiar with this, but not everybody. It implies that there exists a lax point. Formulation means that there exists an auxiliary Riemann surface. C. 
leading algebra. And expressions Lx Z sigma B and Ly. So these expressions must be meromorphic functions of Z. And polynomials in sigma and its derivatives. And the key point, when I've written, I, you know, I've written down two expressions, so together they form a one form on or two, bound within this three algebra, so we should think of them as being a connection, like a gauge field. And the beautiful fact is that. Sigma satisfies the harmonic math equation. If and only if these guys are flat. So del x del y minus del y Lx plus Lx there So this is the definition of integrability. This TV is integrable if it can be reformulated in this funny way. So that sigma satisfies the PD if and only if this auxiliary expression defines a flat connection. Uh, okay, any questions? It's a flat connection on R2. On R2, yes. What's the role of C, in a way? C? Z? C. Z is a point of C. Oh, it's, it should hold for all values of C. So it's a one parameter value. One parameter paramorphic family of flat connections, which is a structure that happens all the time. So let me do, I will write down one single example of this kind of, of this kind of expression. As I take for example, I'll take the target space M B S U two is S three. So of sigma or two the S U two is a harmonic map. If and only if the connection we'll try to get the sign right. You're not so not guaranteed to get the sign right. So what's going on here? So d sigma is an element of the tangent space of SU2 for every point. So sigma inverse d sigma, but I'm just moving it to the identity. So this, this is really a matrix. This is an element of the Lie algebra SU2. And I can also form the Hodge star 
because this is two components. It's a one form of, or two evaluated matrices that can build this expression. And a little bit of algebra will tell you that the harmonic map equation is equivalent to this being flat. squashed in a very particular way. So this is a formula for the metric. This was discovered by Zanologikov, Zanologikov, somebody else in the early 90s. Here's an interesting fact. This guy, this depends on, on a parameter. and is the unique two-dimensional solution to the Ricci flow equations. That extends to for all length, for all time. Where people study ancient that are called the ancient solutions of the flow equations. There's the classification. This is the unique one of the dimensions. So the connection of all this story to uh, the Ricci flow equations and to the, the beta functions of simple models for generally will come at the end of the talk. Any questions? Are you referring to classical or quantum integrability here? So far, classical, but I'll get to quantum too, because I think, uh, you know, this is a mixed audience, and we don't want to write in the mathematicians with quantum things. So, why the lax equation? Normally, you would say that integrability means that there's lots of conserved quantity. Lots of conserved quantity. So we can ask, why does this lax formulation of the equations lead to an equation with lots of conserved quantities? Well, if you're familiar with geometry, you see a connection, you want to take its holonomy. And it turns out that the holonomy gives you a bunch of conserved quantities. That's why it's useful. 
So we face a representation of my or of the Liao regime. And we'll take my Riemann surface, to be a cylinder, so on. And now we consider the trace in A and OR half over an exponential of the lax equation, of the lax connection. So for instance, if our target manifold was a two-sphere, this expression would be sigma inverse d sigma plus r star, some linear combination like that. I just write down the usual formula for the homonomy, and you notice <coughs> I'm going to integrate this at, say, some value of x naught. You notice that this is independent of x naught. This is really easy to see. So this is just because, because the homonomy of a flat connection uh, doesn't change if you move the path. And of course, the Lax equation says this connection is flat as long as sigma satisfies the equation's motion, satisfies our model map equation. So for this independent statement, I need sigma to be our model map. Okay, so this is the classical version of having a conserved quantity. You have some kind of function of the field, so it doesn't matter where you put it. It doesn't. Hamiltonian is given by time translation, and this commutes with the Hamiltonian. So it is indeed a hallmark of instability. And we have more than one such topological quantity because everything is a homomorphic function of Z. So I can run expand in series in Z, and I get a huge tower of these conserved quantities. And it turns out they all commute with each other. Let's be a little more fancy. So for this discussion, we could think either at the quantum or at our classical level. field theory on the plane, where I have sigma is my field, we can ask, what does this lax connection do? <coughs> because on the plane, it's a bit more difficult to think of homonomy because it's infinite and that integral might not converge. So what, what we say instead is that this quantity should be thought of as a defect of the two-dimensional theory. So 
So what does a defect mean? One way to think about it is, here I have one Lagrangian, here I have another Lagrangian, but on this line, I'm going to add a new term to my Lagrangian by the degree of field. So on the line, so, so we have a new term, Lagrangian, given by the path of an exponential flat matrix. It's often convenient to view the defect as introducing new degrees of freedom, which led at that point. So G D some fermions. to the field of sigma by this box connection. So what's the good of a few minutes ago we saw the lax connection gives lots of conserved quantities. So what's the point of running it this way? Well it turns out that we look, think of what the lax connection as a, as a local defect. That's a very nice feature. It doesn't matter where we draw the path. Lax equation. implies defect is proper one. innocuous enough, but having a topological defect is really strange. Suppose I want to do some measurements. two-dimensional system and I've got to take the correlation function at these points and have some topological defect between them. So the correlation functions they don't change if you move the path by a small amount. Same answer. But suppose I do a discontinuous change where this jumps past one of the points I measure, then it will be a different answer.
So this configuration will not give the same answer as this. That, that, and over there. So, for a two-dimensional field theory, so my, my take is that the hallmark of integrability is that there are a large number of topological light effects. We flip around a little bit, nothing happens, but something drastic might happen if I do a bigger change. So you can ask, well, does this ever happen? Well, I mentioned a bunch of examples of classically integrable two-dimensional field theories, and many of those quantized. But there's something even more familiar. So let me describe the discrete version. Suppose I want to discretize one of these systems and want to make some kind of lattice approximation. I might draw a lattice like this. This lattice represents my, my two-dimensional system. So one can ask, you know, what does it mean to have a topological line defect in such a system? So let's draw it. So this uh, in yellow is going to represent a topological line defect. So when is this topological? Every, every motion is made up of a bunch of small motions, so we can analyze whether or not this expression is topological by looking locally. If I look locally, I want to compare this with this. So, this is a familiar equation. Locally, having a topological line defect is equivalent to the yang baxter equation. So there are many examples of discrete systems which have lots of topological line defects. They're essentially classified by the yang baxter equation. Still classical? What's the, Is the story so far still classical? Um, the only ingredients. So here, this this particular here I meant statistical mechanics science models. So they're like quantum field theory and Newton's signature, but discretized. So some like something in Baxter's book, for instance. I don't know if you want to think of that as classical or quantum, but it's just statistical mechanics. Um, these continuum models will exist at the task line the bottom level. So, years I've been doing some work with um, Nemazaki and Witten and more recently with Gaiotto and uh, his collaborators, Lee and Wu, um, but about a unified approach to building these classical and quantum integral models in the discrete and continuum settings. So I, I want to explain how to build the continuous models. So the construction is fun because it you know, gives a huge number of new models, and they have some, some interesting <coughs> geometry in it. 
So in the beginning, we saw that the Lux connection depends on exactly some curve. And the 2D theory lives in some other surface. So what we're going to do is put them together into four-dimensional space-time, and we'll see that all of these integral models appear naturally by studying a gauge theory of this four-dimensional space-time. Consider all these space-time. Sigma cross C. And we're going to choose oh yeah, a meromorphic one form. And we will consider. So our, our, our result is that if we dimensionally reduce, sorry, say compactify on C, we get the C D theory. This theory is cool. and it has lots of topological line defects that are labeled by it. by 40 Wilson lines. Okay, so there's some important details to understand in a minute. So firstly, let's say, hold on, I said the theory was topological in sigma. Surely that I can't, surely I would get something really boring when I reduce on C because it will simply be topological. Well there's a subtlety I didn't tell you exactly what we do holes and zeros for the variable form for, that will, that will break the topological system. I'll get to that. But the beautiful feature of this is just the fact that the theory came from 40 topological 40 theory with this topological nature implies it has topological land effects. Because in 40, this is say, or two, 
in 40 away from the poles and zeros of the work form on this plane if P is like a TFT. So if I draw my Wilson line, I can just move it around freely and nothing happens. So as long as I stay away from the poles and zeros, life is good. And I have this abundance of topological line defects, which are the hallmark of the true problem. So C can be very genus now? It can be anything. Any other questions? So, let me explain the subtle piece. So, I'm going to re again, I'm not going to allow myself an arbitrary variable to conform, I just want to restrict singularities to some degree. So, I'll, I'll assume. That the warm form has second order poles and it's a number of first order zeros. So I wanted to explain what we do at these special points and how that affects the encoding. How that affects the story. So it's natural that we, that we give C the metric. Get the bar. So near uh, the first order zeros, it looks like z squared is z, z bar. So this, this is a metric with a conical singularity. CP1, the natural metric of DZ as a second order pole, so it, it will look like infinity in the plane. and some singularities in the middle. So what happens at infinity doesn't really matter. These are just some bad conditions. It's kind of easy to do. So we just give the gauge there is a natural duration. <coughs> in the metric where the one form has a zero, so it looks like CPC. Well, we have to say something because the Lagrangian is badly behaved. It looks like the integral of Z, 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 A, A. This is really bad because uh, the kinetic term is too degenerate to make sense of. It's like Z, D, Z. But the equations in motion I say that z times the curvature vanishes. It's not, not a good equation. So to fix this, we say 
some of the components of this field will have to fall. By filling like a little too fast with that sorry. So are you thinking about A, A is basically the lax connection from yes. before? Yes, the back of A is the lax connection. Okay. And the lax equations are the equations of motion. Are you eventually going to claim that all integral systems or any ones that we might care about arise from some classification that you might have? Uh, let's see. I mean, every integral system I've ever tried to construct has a license to A. Okay. In, in which case, are these conditions on the zeros and poles for simplicity, and you can do things with other orders, zeros and poles, or is this Yes, right? you can do things with other orders of the same as And you can do other conditions with the first zero. So if I wanted to embed the harmonic map equation into this, I would need to figure out how A should depend on sigma, then I would think about it as like a theory of of the sigma field? Yes. Um, right, so let me, let me give you an example <laughs> that, that might help. So, so here's an example. I take my curve C to be CP1, my one form to have uh, Over C squared, so it has. I'm not going to figure Let me just discuss with the poles and zeros. Have two second order poles and two first order order zeros. So what? I think dz plus dz over C squared. So the claim is that the effective TD theory is a signal model on the moduli of heat bundles on C which are trivialized at the poles only. Okay, so in this case, while well, all G bundles on C are trivial, it's so called the subset, and I'm, but they are, I'm going to trivialize them at two points, and I have an overall G symmetry, so I'm left with G. So, why is that? This is because the z-bar component of the gauge field, as, as a function of w and w-bar, defines a map from the w-w-bar plane to the moduli, this moduli of g-bar distance. So, so what we're seeing is that the z-bar component is sigma. Now, in 
that you try to solve the 40 equations of motion in a gauge where you express this in some very explicit way in terms of sigma. And there's some flatness conditions for these two fields, which will be the equivalent to both the homological equations and the equations. Here, were you imposing a chiral or an antichiral? One, one of each. So I should have been clear. There's two zeros. So one chiral pole, one antichiral. Because if you want to get an ordinary, familiar, non chiral theory, you should have the same number of chiral and antichiral. Can you figure out what the role of the poles was? The poles, the, there's boundary conditions. Oh, okay. So, so here, there are two poles, so it's like a big cylinder. Sorry, so shouldn't I have expected some 1 over, 1 over z type behavior in this az bar component of whatever the... the no, because only only these fields have a pole. The az bar component is regular. Yeah, but you just told me you had one anti-carbon pole. There's, there's three fields, a w, a w, a w, Oh, sorry, w and z are different. Cool. Yeah, yeah, so w is like physical plane. So it's, it's, like, it's surprisingly fun to like, fiddle around with these equations. What did you do to get the same squirt? Uh, Davide had an idea of how to do that by modifying the boundary condition to something, something like a manifold boundary condition. Ah. But we never worked it out. It's impossible. By the way, why couldn't you start in like five dimensions with a one form and trace f by jeff and try to get two dimensional interval theories? I mean, you're gonna I, have to, you want to have something which is quadratic in A, so that's presumably why you don't start with Schoen Simons in higher, even higher dimension. But couldn't you imagine trying to get something topological starting with the integral omega trace f of f in five dimensions? Let's see. I'm not sure that will be elliptic enough by the of PD. And you can do something in five dimensions, but I never was able to do very much. But it's going to watch a pleasant mistake. Oh, and any, any other questions should we move on? Or should I use the top stop? Let's say you have until uh, 540. So the easy things you get are sigma models. I mean, that are, are 2D, various 2D sigma models like this, right? Yeah. And then you got to work. Yeah. Search from your systems. It goes through those areas. Okay. Yeah. The thing of Gordon is, is not as obvious. Okay. I'll get the sigma, <coughs> sigma model into a compact Lie group. Yeah, that's. Is that this one? That's this one. So, so oh, there's a bungee. Oh, I see. If we take the curve to be. The curve is CP1, yeah. and you have to pose a reality condition. Right. And depending on the positions of the poles, you get, you can fix the, uh, what's it called, the price of term, if you want. And in some limit, it becomes a couple of Okay. Sorry, say again. If you if, if there was nothing special about omega, if it didn't have any, uh, then then you would just get a what? Just get a free theory. Nothing interesting. What what's the? Okay. If, if omega does not have any pulse or zeros, what what what? what oh happens? yeah, then then, yeah. then you just get none. Then you just get none. So it's like CP one where omega is a GZ. So right. It just has poles. Right. Right. So poles and zeros, you get nothing. Nothing or a free theory or nothing. No. Literally nothing. Literally nothing. It was an elliptic curve, but there's no poles at zero. So right, right. You get a TFT. Yeah, that was a, that was what I was going to ask. Yeah, you get the TFT. Oh, so so it, 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 I see. So if it's if it's an elliptic curve, you you, you, you get a TFT. I see. Yeah. Okay, cool. And oops. Yeah, that's it. I want to say something a little bit about the, the beta function. I thought that was kind of fun with this last few, last few minutes. So uh, there's a couple of ways we could do this. So, you know, it's, it's fun to do the beta function of something where I have chiral and antichiral degrees of freedom. But another fun thing, which is a lot more practical, is to assume all my 
to be speed of a chiral, but now I have a line defect. And then I can study the flow of that line defect, which is the, the condom. And the other case is, is the, where I both add parallel and decarol things, is the case that connects better to geometry and things like the Gucci flow, but I don't think I can. So firstly, let me say a little bit about the geometry. A surface with the one form is called the translation surface. You can realize it from, a, from polygons. by identifying the sides. So here's an example. So these are much studied in the math literature. So I take this big strip. I'm going to identify the opposite sides of the strip on a big cylinder. But in the middle, I'm going to cut out a hexagon. size of this hexagon to introduce a genus. So this, this whole thing topologically looks like <coughs> a torus with two cylindrical ends. But it has a flat metric with, I think if you figure out that there's a single point there, which has a con uh, the angle around that point is the sum of these angles there, which is 4 pi. So there's a single conical singularity at that point. So it's useful to draw these because the beta function will involve stuff moving around on these surfaces. So this was the one point or two point. I forget if there's one point or two point. Two because it's a one. There's two ends. So there's two first order poles. There's cars, two corresponding zeros. So there's, this is two uh, two conical singularities. So consider this theory. System on, on the space of G bundles on which they curve, which are trivialized at two points. With some very particular heat angle. In general, if everything is chiral, it almost looks like some beta gamma system on some modular space. At some point, in my curve, couple of those This is something you can write explicitly in terms of the, the G bundle because I have some point in the elliptic the curve and I'm coupling in some degrees of freedom associated to a representation of G at that point. So this line effect flows. Leading order. Surface. 
is that there's a well-behaved, well-defined form of correction. The quantum correction is I replace maybe I shouldn't erase the surface. The quantum correction is there's a mixed anomaly. lives in their weak curvature of C. So this is not such a crazy anomaly. It's a mixed gravitational gauge anomaly of the kind that would appear in 40 theories. The triangle diagram. But because my curvature is localized at these delta functions, this mixed anomaly is given by some kind of sum of the conical points, some of, some of the zeros of omega, times the standard anomaly. So the standard anomalies, the 2D anomaly, is the boundary term for trans-Simons theory. Our action is a trans-Simons action. We can correct this anomaly by changing our action to give this thing by anomaly in flow. So it's cancelled by correcting omega to omega plus h bar prime, where omega prime has first order holes at the zeros of omega, and the claim is that at the quantum level, the quantum beta function, at least in part of the perturbation theory, is given by the flow for the metric built from this guy. Yeah, at least to all orders in perturbation. There appear to be some exponential perturbations. And, oh, okay, so sorry, I'm just sorry. Yeah. This, this is a fun example. We have these flat surfaces. I'll draw my surface again. Hexagon. And these infinite regions, I can put a Wilson line over here, which is very quickly coupled. It couples by some current. It kind of moves in. There's some wacky thing in here in the middle. It zooms off again. And the cool thing about these flows is that they are known to be ergodic by various famous works in the map. So I'll stop there. Was that you want omega to be nowhere vanishing or something? So that there are these three cases of EAD and elliptic? That's, that. yeah, that's, I mean, if you want to have just two lines living in the trivial theory, yeah. you need that. But if you want to engineer a 2D continuum theory, it's okay to have three cases. If you just want to have a lattice, oh, okay. You need that. Because what we're finding is if you actually have zeros, then you're forced to have a continuum to be able to do this. But there's not much you can do on that spot. Okay. And therefore, they probably also wouldn't have algebraic symmetries that are as clean. Because that was the original reason people were looking for these trigonometric elliptic R magazines in an equal number. Sure. Can you describe? This beta function again a little more explicitly. Is, is, is this a is this a one loop statement? Is this a, is this supposed to be? I I, I believe this is an all all. Oh, because operation. it's controlled by the anomaly. Yes, I think the anomaly is because it's the anomaly. Okay, but so can then uh, so what is uh, so can you say what omega prime is again? So if it's something has first, please think. 
D-bar, which is the, is the, you know, right. so it has first order poles uh, where I add elements and arms. In this example, something which has first order poles of these two points. Does so that uniquely fix what omega prime? In general, no. In this example, it takes it up to a constant, just because on the elliptic curve you get a function right. of two different poles. So that h bar is just a overall scaling of omega prime. Yeah, yeah, it's just, but it's not like a loop expansion. Mm -hmm. So the level of the anomaly would come in the order of the poles. Yes. And there's going to be a, there's going to be a coefficient of the two constant up there uh -huh. because the uh, is in this time. Right? If I remember, it's related. There's a framing and all of this. Case. But beyond this example, it's always one loop exact. I think so. But you said that you, there are some indications of non-perturbative corrections? Yes, there's, um, there's a part of the story that the more, much more views of data than me, where he says, if you look at this equation, what it's telling us is, okay, here we have one form, but this whole expression is like a twisted one form. Uh, so it's something which these trans transition functions change in a different way, and from which you can build a shorter one later. So Davide claim, Davide's result is that if I have this Wilson line, and I put in the cylinder, I think it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 um, that that's controlled by the transport coefficients of a shorter one later built from this kind of thing. And there appear to be so this is an example of what's it called? The IM correspondence. Any other question? Not let's thank Professor Castillo again. <laughs>